<laughs> I'm going to Burger King. That's where I can sway the most horse neutral people. <laughs> I think that's fair. We are live, oh by God. the way. Oh, that's fucked up. Yeah, it's, it's hello everybody. It's a crime. It's a game. I'm update. Did you update us or uh, no? I oh my God. <laughs> okay, hold okay. On. Do you want me well, go, go off? fuck yourself? <laughs> it's fine. I did. I I'll, I get so I'm so used. To, it actually it does say that we're streaming Rogue. Yeah, that's, I'm trying to fix it. Okay. Trying to fix it. Trying to fix it. Yeah. I, I, if there's one thing you can count on, it's that I will never update the Twitch. <laughs> <clears throat> I and I'm proud of you for that. Thank you. Like I think that's I think that's great. You you everybody has to draw their lines, and your line is I'm not going to do the basics, and I respect <laughs> that. <laughs> My line is below the bare minimum minimum i don't even know what that word means yeah so if we're live i'm gonna have to tell the chat sorry you know but i did forget to grab some water so i'll be right back yeah go for it uh let me pull up the game crimes oh my god do i already have the game crime no that's up from last time hello Rucktowl says hello, hello. Smoke23 says hello, friends. K Weirik says hi. Hello to all of you. Um, I don't know who all was here last time, um, but we played a bit of Rogue. I should probably tweet that we're live. Um, uh, but we kind of, I was doing it for a score challenge at the time. Score challenge is actually still going on. I thought it ended at the, on the, uh, on New Year's Eve. Um, but this time I wanted to actually take a second, um, when June was here so we could actually kind of like delve a little deeper into, into what Rogue is and how it works. Um, I was going to look at some history and I, and I didn't do that. Um, but then after that, we're going to play a slightly more modern roguelike, uh, still, still retro though, is, um, we're going to play Sheer and the Wanderer, uh, translated, translated version on um on super nintendo where are you dumbass ah there you go yeah <laughs> get him <laughs> i gotta ask gotta ask june june a question about that cabinet back there <laughs> yeah do you already know what the question i'm gonna ask you I don't know. What's is, up? Is there a CRT in that cabinet back there? I don't know. Uh, How about a very tiny clock? Oh, uh, <laughs> I, I do like um, I do like you know getting a getting a large entertainment center and just strategically placing a wrist rock, wristwatch in the center of it. That's correct. Yeah. Okay. We're a family that only entertains each other with clocks, and that's why we have so many emotional problems. That, you are so close to being a Batman villain. It's not even funny. I'm just waiting for the horrible turn. Come on, yeah. life, get worse. Absolutely. I've so <laughs> I got Rogue up. I've already done a run. A run. Um, I in the time it took for me to grab a glass of water. No, I did a run before we went live. <laughs> okay. Okay. So and I've I've taken to um, I play as Borfucko, but I've taken to numbering. The incarnation. So this is Borfucko the second. Um, a rogue Borf, legacy, if you will. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Borf, uh, Borfucko the first. Uh, he met an embarrassing end. He, he essentially it's the rogue equivalent of slipping on a banana peel. He died in the first on the first floor. It's like when you look into history at some important historical figure, and then you learn they died by like you going to the bathroom too much. Yeah. Uh, so this <laughs> is. This is the Amiga port of Rogue. Um, Rogue Probably the most visual one, yeah? Uh, the Atari ST is... Uh, I don't know that it's better, because it's um, it allows you to, like... It, it zooms in closer, um, but that means that, that means that when you get to the edge of the screen, it's got to redraw, like, the whole thing, and it does it kind of slow. But they have, like, shadows, and the art is actually really good. Um, Ooh, that... Um, may I ever have a reason to look at into an Atari? That might be it. Yeah, like, yeah. I have I have no warmth for Atari in my heart, but yeah, I don't think I'll, I, I've I'll fuck never with Rogue. touched an ST. I don't. 
I don't know anything about it. I'm, but that being said, I'd never touched the Amiga before playing this version of Rogue. Um, but uh, yeah, Ro Rogue is traditionally done with all ASCII characters. Um, this takes this takes place in the same grid the Amiga version does, but uh, they've got actual character art. There's d zero sound. Um, it's, it's of course. There's no music. Course. There's no anything else. Um, but the way the game the way the game works is you it's procedurally generated. It just drops you on the first floor. The goal is to get down to the bottom of those floors. It's twenty five floors, I think. Um, and then you get an amulet. And then you have to carry that amulet all the way back up out the first floor. Um, it doesn't matter. You're not going to get there anyway. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but as you see here, the, this is uh, we started in the center room. All of the dungeons are on a three by three grid. So if you imagine like this room, then there'd be one to the right and left, and then a row of three on top and a row of three on bottoms. Sometimes that's just a hallway connecting two rooms. There's always something in every in every spot, but it, it sometimes it's just a dead end. There's not necessarily a room there. Um, but you pick up things like uh, we're gonna get a scroll right here. The scroll has no, uh, it has a it has a name, but it's just gibberish. Um, we can hit R to read a scroll, and we're just gonna read it and see what it does, and it puts us to sleep. Hell yeah, dog! I wish I had one of those. <laughs> That'd be sweet. Well, the nice thing is, the next time we see it, uh, it's gonna, um, it it'll all tell us that it's a sleep scroll because we've already we've already read one of them. Um, that was pretty rad. I entered this room and a, a frost monster was blasting itself in the face with ice. <laughs> just it just around the house, like it just it yeah. immediately bounced off the wall and hit itself in the face, and then I got experience for it, so that, <laughs> that felt good. We have Rooktolos in the chat saying Rogue is the game that defined the roguelite genre, and that's all I know about it. Yeah. I'm going to expand that. Um, Rogue is the game that defined the roguelike genre, um, and the roguelike genre is a lot broader than the modern application of what roguelike means, which is procedural generation and incidental upgrades over time. Um, Rogue itself is based on a, an attempt to mimic a lot of rules from paper, Dungeons Dragons style RPGs. Um, but it's the the size and scope and scale of what can show up in the the dungeon that's really the interesting thing in terms of design, uh, as well as, for lack of a better way to put it, the crunchiness of it. You know, I think picking up a scroll and having to read it to figure out what it does and then it ends up putting you to sleep is like the definition of the roguelike genre in my mind. It's the um, it's it's grappling with the unknown and and having fun with that and accepting that sometimes that means you die. Yeah, I I think that was the that was what we were talking about earlier. Is just like the uh, the ability to like a no, knowing that you're gonna die takes a lot of the pressure off because when you die, mm -hmm. then it's not it's not a huge defeat. It, you were expecting it to happen, um, but also the unpredictable ways in which you can die um, leads to an, a lot of like emergent emergent storytelling. And you 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 always have you, the way that I. Um, the way that I measure a good game sometimes is, is do I want to, do I want to tell the story of the game, you know, the game that I just played to, uh, to my friends. Um, and like we've said, Marvel snap does that a lot. Like every, every game that I play is so random and unpredictable that I want to tell its story, um, after it's over. And rogue is rogue does a lot of the same, um, has a lot of that same effect for me. I would say a lot of the modern definition of roguelike comes down to almost like a strict, oh, this game is about passing and failing, um, which I don't, I, th I think that's actually kind of uh, a distracting way to view these games. I think a better comparison would to be maybe think about playing Tetris, right? Like you can technically win Tetris, but most of the time you play Tetris, you're going to play until you die and how long you last and, and what happens in the process is part of the joy of playing that game. Um, there is a narrative to these games for sure, and that's part of the beauty of them. But if you approach them more like a run in a puzzle game, then I think you'll have more fun with them and more fun with the randomness that pops up. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, for lack of a better way to put it, sometimes you read a sleep scroll and you get fucked up and you get killed by an ice monster. And in Tetris, sometimes you just don't get an L block for 30 blocks. And it's the same idea, right? It's It's... The joy of playing this genre is not just in experiencing the emergent Holy gameplay, shit. but thinking 
about it while you're moving through. My man got a dungeon, a, a dang treasure room. <laughs> that is, uh, I'm seeing three ice monsters in there. Ice monsters give you so much experience. It's uh, pretty good. <laughs> The dead check-in says, wave, we wave right back. Jaime says, what I've seen, if you played, it seems more my speed than modern roguelikes. I would agree with that, but I think um, I think it, it might be jarring for people who play a lot of modern roguelikes to play a game like this because it is not very action-oriented. You can think things through. Um, one of the central mechanics of the rogue genre at, at broadly is what they call the step timer. So whenever you take a step, everything in the dungeon takes a step, so to speak. Mm -hmm. Um and that means that until you step, nothing happens for the most part. There are some roguelike games that will fuck with you, but for the most part, you can just expect to catch your breath and think things through, and most of the time, that's going to be okay. I you are smoking those ice monsters. The ice oh, monsters, my God. They give you a ton, of, a ton of experience, and they have, like, next to no HP, so it's it's great. Um, mm -hmm. I think that thing that's, that surprised me, like, um, is that after playing this game... In my head, I, I felt like there was rogue, and then there were no roguelikes until, like, the modern indie game scene. Which I think that's when that's when most people heard the term roguelike. That's, you know, that's when it kind of gained popularity. But, well, I should say popularity, you know, mainstream popularity. But um, then seeing, like, uh, I'm watching some videos about Sheer and the Wanderer that we're going to play next. That, uh, that's... It's got this style, but it but also paired with that like you know Super Nintendo like RPG aesthetic. I um, think that one one thing to keep in mind um, when it comes to games like Rogue is that they're older than Dirt. Like Rogue itself, I believe comes in in late seventies, if I remember correctly. Yeah. Um, and there were actually other roguelikes that were popular on the PC. The one that stands to mind is Angband, which is kind of like an open source version of Rogue with a bunch of crazy shit added into it. Um, but the Rogue approach was so popular that many Japanese developers attempted to create an arcade version of it. And that's where you get games like Dragon Slayer and Tower of Druaga, which are, you know, when they came out on the NES were very poorly known and recognized, but are very clearly attempts to make an arcade version of this. And so from there, from your Dragon Slayers and your Tower of Druaga, we get JRPGs, action RPG, RPGs, Zeldas, um, and the SNES has a surprising number of games that are very inspired by um, the roguelike genre. Yeah, there's the mystery dungeon games, but also games like Seventh Saga and Brandish do have roguelike elements in them. Um, so but let's be real, I, I suggested Mike play Sheer and the Wanderer because nothing touches it. That, that game is beautiful. I'm extremely excited about that game. Mm-hmm. I have lost days of my life to that game. So there's gotta be and I'm loving it. Somewhere around here. But the Smoke23 says, Angband was so good. That's correct, my friend. That is correct. Uh, what I'm doing now is just searching along the wall, and I found a door with an ice monster behind it. Um, every time you move, it's one unit at a time. Um, and when you search, there's, like, if you're searching for, like, a door or a trap, there's only a chance that you'll find it if it exists there. Um, so what I was doing was you type 10. So it'd be, like, 10 t for 10 turns, I want to search on every turn. And then hit S for search, and it was uh, it was searching for 10 turns until it found it. I feel like that has to be a mimic of, like, D&D's pass failed dice system. Yeah, for you sure. You know what I mean? Um, and in this case, it's time as a resource that you have to manage. But I think it's a, it, you can see a lot of parallels to like dungeon games, for lack of a better way to put it, in this stuff. It didn't just come from nowhere. Yeah, and it's important to know too that I have, uh, I have food. Um, so I, if, I wanna, if I wanted to stand there and, and search over and over again, I can, but I'm going to get real hungry and maybe waste my food, and you can die of starvation. That's one thing that I, I know a lot of people who try these games have a real hatred for is, is a food slash stamina system. Um, but I think it's what makes the game really tick. Yeah. If this game allowed you to infinitely explore every every floor, then there would be no delicate balance between the exploration and the time spent. You know, it, open world games encourage us to see every little corner of the world, and games like Rogue ask you, are you willing to risk what it may take to see every corner of the world? Which I think is more interesting. 
Yeah, and the the food mechanic, you're you're most likely gonna die from something else before you starve anyway. If you starve, it's because you're indecisive for the most part. I mean, some roguelikes are built around it. I would say Sheeran is actually the most food based roguelike I've ever played. Um, but it's generous with its food, and its food actually has multiple mechanical uses. So, um, the 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 key is to just kind of let these games be what they are and appreciate them for being these little environments that are um, interconnected and, and pretty detailed. Yeah. Ruchula says the first game I played with procedurally generated dungeons was Dragon Warrior Monsters. That's the uh, Game Boy one, right? Oh like, yeah, I think so. That game's pretty darn good. I didn't know that was procedurally generated. The dungeons have some procedural generation in them. Should we drink some and, uh, potions? So does Lufia 2, for that matter. Look at all these potions I got. One of them's probably going to kill me, but let's find out. It's like real life. Just drink whatever you find on the ground. Wait, a cider. Oh, what do you think? The purple one? Mm, yes, absolutely. You feel lightheaded for a moment, and then it passes. Um... And that's all it's going to tell me. I don't actually know what that one means. A lot of it comes it mean, from memorizing these descriptions. It means that you are ready for a fun night on the town with the girls. That's facts. We'll call that potion fun with girls. <laughs> uh, we're gonna I need me a girl's potion. Let's drink one of these yellow ones. That tastes are you just going to... You feel warm all over. Ooh. I, if I remember correctly, this one, like, restores strength. Yeah, I was at 15, and now I'm up to 16, so yeah. Call it, so you call it Mountain Dew, right? Yeah. It's, ye it's yellow, it gives you energy. Um, it's better than water. Ooh, this one's dark vision. Ooh. Once you get past a certain floor, every room is going to be dark, so those are, those are nice to have. Um, that is, I think, my least favorite mechanic in the game, is the dark mechanic. Yeah, um, true. But maybe that's because I'm I'm a little headstrong and usually just don't bother with potions and end up dying. <laughs> Whoops. I got a tungsten wand. Who knows what that does? Ruchula says the last floor was predetermined, but the floors above those were random and always had a different layout in the Dragon Warrior Monsters game. That is interesting. Um, that, that's enough to inspire me to go poke around with it a little bit. Ooh, another enchant weapon. So you might notice I get, like, um, here's my inventory. I picked up some studded leather armor. I picked up, uh, you know, a wand, a ring, um, a two-handed sword. I haven't used any of these things because you don't know what they are, and they may be cursed. Um, and, like, if it's cursed, it both has, like, stat penalties, and you can't take it off until you can remove the curse. I mean, sometimes you just... Uh, you decide to just fucking YOLO it, which I think I'm probably going to do, actually. You probably should. Yeah, How would you feel if I told you I was giving you a, a scroll of sleep that I bought on the dark web? Would you try it? Like, in real life? I mean, probably, but isn't that just a boring book? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, kind of. I'm, I'm giving you the pillars of the earth. That armor is worse, so I'm going to put this armor back on. The zombie came up and fucking hit me while I was doing it. Um, let's Good. see what weapon we got here. I'm trying to think of some other roguelikes people might have known for the time. Um, early in the PlayStation, we had Azure Dreams by Konami, which is a lovely little, like, Pokemon-inspired roguelike. Um, the, there's a classic... Uh, PS1 Saturn game. It's a first-person roguelike called Baroque. I definitely recommend you try that. Dead Chicken, you do you. I hope you enjoy that book. I do not. At all. And uh, have tried to many times. Which book? Pillars of the Earth. Oh. It's very long, and it's very detailed, let's just say. <laughs> Which is not my kind of thing. I think it just said something about me being hungry, so I'm gonna eat a, a bread. I don't. If it tastes awful, I don't know if that means that it just doesn't restore as much stamina or what. But we'll find out. That's, a, that's another <laughs> weird thing is that it's it's shockingly hard to find concrete information about what this what this uh, all these messages mean. Um, mm -hmm. There are wild magic scrolls where it's like it pops up a warning. It's the only thing that pops up a warning you have to actually click on. 
that was like, this item seems uncontrollable. Do you still want to use it? And you say yes or no. <laughs> but I've Googled like the exact words that it uses. Comes back with nothing. I cannot <laughs> find anybody talking about what that does. <laughs> so I've used, I, I think I've used it. That's so beautiful. Drop my shit on the ground. And then you start to pick <laughs> it up again. So how many t runs do you think you've done in the past week? Probably close to fifty. That's ballin', dude. Yeah, I've been I've been obsessed. Yeah, fuck you, ice monster. It just holds up so well. Like this feels like I'm honestly I'm surprised that there's not like modern like. I know there's, like, other, there's roguelike games, but there's no, like, modern adaption of rogue specifically. Yeah, that's that's strange to me, because I feel like every other IP has been necromancered into the Steam marketplace in the past ten years. Yeah. Um, it's, it's, to me, the interesting question is, what would you do with rogue to make it different? Well, I think it's right? important to say, like, I don't think that there necessarily needs to be one. I'm just mm -hmm. surprised that it hasn't been done. Like somebody that hasn't just slapped a slapped a GUI on it and been like, "Here's Rogue. Remember Rogue?" <laughs> There's so many um, other games that do that though that just basically do the same thing. And oh, but you're in outer space now, or you know, you're in a different thing. Um, someone asked us in the chat, "Have we played Dungeon Crawl?" Um, I have not played Dungeon Crawl, but I know what it is, and I would like to. I do not know what it is. What is it? And Dungeon Crawl, there. Well, it depends on which ask. But there's there is a PC game that's called Dungeon Crawl. But there are also some old fashioned um, tabletop RPGs that are all based on dungeon crawling. I'm not sure if that's what this guy is bringing up, but um, it's it, there's like a modern implementation of it, and then the dungeon crawl genre itself was popular in the 70s and 80s. Um, oh, Dungeon Crawl Stone Soup. Uh, yes. I have not played Stone Soup. That's another one of these more classic rogue games that I have not touched. This uh, this run is that they're really fucking with the um, hidden doors. Like there <clears throat> there are more hidden doors in this one than I've experienced in any of my other runs. Dungeon Crawl to... is yeah yeah yeah. Dungeon Crawl was actually a like a um, open source roguelike. That's that's the other interesting part about it, um, and it's from like the late '90s, mid 2000s. I'm trying to think; <laughs> it's all coming back to me. I have not played Pixel Dungeon. I am unfamiliar with that. I think that's another one. I, if I could recommend one modern roguelike to everybody, it would be unequivocally Share in the Wanderer and the Tower of Dice of Fate. Um, but that's a game that you can get on your Vita. That's a game that you can get on your PS4 or whatever, whatever. For a Steam exclusive, you have to play Caves of Cud, which is a beautiful roguelike entirely based around like body hacking in the future. So your upgrades are things like installing a scorpion tail on your chest or, you know, getting a third arm that's large and green. It's all kind of based around being a post apocalyptic freak mutant. And it's uh, beautiful. This is uh this run is actually going pretty well. I was about to say you're skating through this thing, my man. I do need to restore my strength because I hit a rattlesnake and it bit me. There's a snake in your boot. Uh, getting a lot of gold from these uh these drops, that's nice. I do like how we were like, yeah, these games are intense, you will die a lot. Mike's on floor eight just getting money. <laughs> <laughs> just getting fat stacks. We're just picking a fist fight with the centaur. Holy shit, he hurt me a lot. Come on, hit him! Oh, another nice thing about Caves of Cud is that a lot of the uh, temporary effects are just, like, flavored as doing drugs, which I find very funny. Like smoking a moss or something like that. Yeah, we got the centaur. We had to drink all our healing potions, but we did it. That's right. Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> fuck off, Centaur. Mm-hmm. This is Mike's basement now. 
You're you're half a horse, which means you can eat half my nuts. <laughs> so one nut? Yeah, yeah. Wait, wait, one point <laughs> five. Thank you very much. Wait, what? <laughs> I I may not be qualified to do math. One point three repeating. <laughs> scroll let's read it scroll no 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 scroll never hurt no one okay let's see what this scroll does identify scroll hell yeah what is this ring aggravate monster i'm glad i didn't put that one on <laughs> that's so good by the way <laughs> the fact that it challenges your immediate like desire to put all your fancy clothes on but that being said what are the chances both rings suck? Pretty high, I would say. <laughs> I'm gonna put I don't know. Stone ring on left or right hand. I don't know if it matters, but it's going on the right or left. Whoops. And I have no idea what it did. It just says that I'm wearing a moonstone ring now. Um, Which is cool. Yeah. I'm gonna drop this bow because ain't no world where I ever equip a bow. All, like, why? <laughs> well, because all the bow does is it gives you plus one to hit. And it's like, why take up an inventory slot when you can literally just throw the arrows? That's true, that's true. It's like, if you're far enough away, you can throw the arrows and you'll, you know, you'll hit. The, throwing arrows is good for killing leprechauns. My grandfather told me that. <laughs> He's from the old world. Boston. <laughs> Oh my god, I have to go so far to get back to the other doors. I'm gonna die of starvation just walking. That's sick. Oh my god, I hate slime. Get the fuck out of here. Yeah, slimes are nightmarish. And you have to basically, like, kite them to a doorway, because they... They divide, and then if you're standing, like, even if I'm standing here, that's two slimes that get to hit me for every move that I make. Which is a part of, like, the... God, I can't believe I'm going to say this. It, these games do care about footsies a lot. They care about where you are positionally and how you move and which direction you move, how quickly. Um, it, it's, it's, a, it's an interesting element of the game that doesn't get talked about a lot, the spatial element. What's weird is that, like, I can move diagonally, Okay. Not in and out of doorways. So that leads, <laughs> that leads to a weird situation where, like, sometimes you just, you have no, if there's a, an enemy sitting inside a doorway, I can't, like, if it was in that lower spot inside the room, I can't attack them from there. I have to go in the room and take a hit. In real life, if you walk through a doorway from a diagonal position, is that, like, uh, Kramer drifting? Is that what you call it? <laughs> You slide into the door frame. I literally described myself entering the room in Greetings Adventures a little bit ago as sliding in like Kramer. The Kramer dash. Yeah. The, the Kramer, he's Kramer stepping. <laughs> That's my favorite music genre. <laughs> I love when a room is fully lit and I don't have to... Oh, I fell in a trap down to the floor below. That's such a fun trap, too. This one, uh, so these guys, they hit your armor. They don't hit you. So, so like, first thing you start fighting one of these guys, get naked. True. I used to be wearing... Oh, God. He, already, he hit me twice in the time that it took me to take my armor off, though. <laughs> It kind of rocks that, that getting naked is a strat. <laughs> Let's eat some rations. Yum, that tasted good. I agree. The only the only other game I could say that for is Bayonetta. Wait, what now? It's like the only other game that rewards you for taking your clothes off is Bayonetta. I don't. I that just means, played Bayonetta. Yeah, so but I'm not the, familiar with that. Oh, so like the higher your combo, the more of her outfit falls off, and you get a, a damage increase. Oh Jesus! Because Christ. it's it's one of those kind of things. I'm not going to fight that. 
Uh, the nymphs <laughs> eat, eat items out of your inventory. It's beautiful. Are you going to get poisoned? No. Get out of here. I, don't think that, I haven't been poisoned by them. They just bite you and lower your strength. <laughs> Can't Jaime says it. Food. You better eat. Can you eat some and I make did. room? I did. Okay. Okay. Jaime says in the movie Bronson, he yells, getting naked and greased up, putting on my armor. That's sick. My inventory is full, so let's uh, enchant weapon again. Let's do it. And then... What's the worst that could happen? You die instantly? <laughs> that Well, that <laughs> scroll I already knew was enchant weapon. I got teleported to a shit room. Okay, cool. <laughs> scroll uh, of lousy teleportation. Actually, I should just drop this scroll of sleep. I know I don't want it. Um, F Can you throw it at someone? That's a good question. I'll, I guess I'll pick it up. Let me, well, let me just see. Throw, throw, we'll do that way. No, you cannot throw. I can throw potions, though. That's actually good to know. Rutula says, Kramer Sep sounds like a dubstep sum genre made using samples from Seinfeld. Um, Don't let the kids know about that one, because we'll be Kramer stepping into 2023. Oh, God. Lit. It'll be lit. Hit, we will be lit. Me. Oh my god, he took out my armor, but not quick enough. That it, yeah, the dark, the darkness kind of pisses me off because it like it extremely re reduces your ability to strategize, and mm -hmm. they and they overuse it. I think so. I mean, it it is kind of one of the central mechanics of this game, so I respect that it exists. Um, but I think other roguelike games in the genre deal with darkness a little more interestingly. Sure. Wow. Because in this one, it literally is just like eat shit or use a sight scroll. There's no options. I've never seen a hallway this complicated before. <laughs> oh, but a potion in it. Let's drink it. Sweet. You can't move. <laughs> okay, you can move. Again. <laughs> Paralysis potion. Good. There's a door coming out this way. Kramer step. I'm going to think about Kramer step for a while, I think. Red potion. What's that taste like? Tastes like red. You feel very sick. Cool. Sweet. We'll call that Mountain Dew Code Red. There's worse Mountain Dews you could have picked. Well, let's be real. These aren't based on real things. I think Code Red is actually the best Mountain Dew. But... Yeah, that's fair. Or maybe the Grape Mountain Dew. I don't know if they have that anymore, but that was pretty bopping. Uh, are you familiar that they changed the formula for Butterfinger? What? Yeah, Butterfinger's like four or five years ago, they changed what they taste like, and they taste like shit now. What, dude? Yeah. That's not okay. Yeah. Somebody did lay a finger on my Butterfinger. I grew up in the suburbs. That's the only culture I have is knowing candies and that's upsetting is it still like hard shards of peanut butter for some reason yeah okay but it just, that's at least it just good taste good mm, no uh we need to return mike yeah we have to go back <laughs> we have to go back i just realized i'm not wearing any armor they have to go back to when they made those twixes that had peanut butter in them which is bopping. That sounds okay. It was a, it's a peanut butter Twix with a chocolate cookie on the inside. I'm going to put this other ring on. Rutilo says, Baja Blast is the best Mountain Dew. I will fight anyone who says otherwise. Okay. Oh. I guess we're gonna fight Next that. week, yeah. Games Crimes Coliseum. Make it happen. We will meet you halfway. We will duel in Lexington, Kentucky. <laughs> They're, they know us there. They're expecting us. <laughs> I'm meeting you at the Dueling Mountain. Smoke23 says PB Crisp, and that is fucking correct. Wait, did we... PB Crisp is delicious. Was was the Were you intentionally invoking the term Mountain Duel? Yes. Okay. But Hell yeah. maybe not intentionally. <laughs> <laughs> Once I, re I thought about it, like, yeah, I guess I was. Now I think about it, like, I don't know what a Mountain Duel is. 
<laughs> the dead chickens. Are you sure Candy just doesn't suck as an adult? Hold up now. Hold up. Oh my God, I Hold up. No, I'm positive because, like, I eat a lot of Butterfingers. And I noticed <laughs> the change. Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty pro Candy here. Um, you know, I, I don't need much. I just need a little licorice to be happy. But not that Twizzler shit. Get that out of here. They are really throwing these fucking armor eaters at me. Yeah, and you're getting rich, too, which is really funny. Like, you just keep picking up money, money, money. I am, but look at my armor situation. Uh, it's true. That this is what I'm holding. <laughs> and I guess I'll put one on. Better than nothing. Smoke says, I'm not going to lie, I like the new pink lemonade Mountain Dew. That sounds promising, actually. I'm just throwing that out there. I mean, if we're talking sodas, a lemonade soda does not sound bad. You know what's also not bad? The watermelon Mountain Dew is not half bad. Even though it is a it has a heavy military theme, which is very confusing to me. Oh, another scroll of identify. Brutalis says I'm far away in Texas, so we'd have to travel quite a ways. Yeah, but here's the thing. If if we go to Texas for a duel, then Mike gets to go to Bucky's. Ooh. And if he loses the duel, it's one of the greatest <laughs> things you can do <laughs> before going out. Up. Fun with girls purple! <laughs> Forgot about that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, naming, naming the potions is like leaving a little treat for yourself. It's true. Mike, would you duel someone in a Bucky's, or would that be like, uh, you know, would that be a tarnishing the Bucky's legacy? I don't legacy? think there's any reason to. I think you both have achieved, have gotten what you wanted at that point. <laughs> because you're at Bucky's. Yeah. <laughs> you're gonna duel a man from your stream over some beaver nuggets. I believe in you. Oh fuck, uh, troll! This is probably where this run ends. <laughs> I have never been to Bucky's, but I may have to go for to Texas for work against my will. Uh, and you know, I'll try to make do by going to Bucky's. Nickel or tungsten? Tungsten all day. Uh, was this past the troll? Let's do it again. Oh, it's lightning. Lightning bolt. Lightning's fine, but I'm kind of hoping for a more drastic effect. We're gonna do the nickel one this time. <laughs> Missile hits the troll. Troll's injured. Magic. Magic missile. Oh God. Jaime said, call it bussies. They love that. Do they? Do they love that? <laughs> this is like a really good way to get hate crimed. Okay. <laughs> I have four. If this missile doesn't kill it, uh, then then the run's over. Let's do it. The missile vanishes with you. a puff of smoke. Oh, boy. <laughs> I mean, this Bork is just... Bork the second, killed by a troll. This is a metaphor for being on the internet, isn't it? It really is. Yeah. We honor you, Borf. I need to, any future Have fun runs, in your grave. Any future runs, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to call my character at Borf Fucko. <laughs> I do like the implication that this game takes place in 2023. Like, <laughs> you're, you're on your way to, to Texas, and you pulled over and stopped at a 54 dungeon. Well, should we switch over to a game with sound? Oh, you better believe it. More like switch over to a game with swag. Am I right? Oh, I want to actually, I want to show you this. Uh, um, since I have the Amiga up right now, I wanted to show you this uh, collection. This is a really nice interface. Let's do it. I don't have to actually play anything in it. but This is the mini MIG. Is it just going to... There we go. I just had to spin up my uh, NAS again. So this is the um, one of the Amiga computer cores on the Mister, then. Right, and this is running a um, a release for the Amiga uh, called the Mega AGS, which is just a collection of games. But it's just a really nice, like, you know, we can go to the Hall of Fame, give you screenshots of all the games you're about to play. Uh, I love that every single one of those logos looks like a, a fucking tanning salon from the late 80s. <laughs> That's ill. But, like, you know, get, get all your information, whether it's PAL or NTSC, which is fucking essential information for me. I know, yeah. 
It's weird that the mister doesn't transpose that, but it does. I guess it's not a, I mean, a miracle it, machine. Yeah, I mean, it, you could like, I mean, the the best you could ask for is for it to stretch the image. Sure. But do you have to worry about like frame rate or anything like that? Um, not really, because it's a PC monitor; it can handle mm. like all sorts of refresh rates. But anyway, yeah. That's nice. It. I like it. Oh my god, that's so cute! Look at the little screen! Oh! Oh! Shout out to Dopus. Now this game, Mike. This game. This is a stinking game right here. I mean... What even is it? Like, has anybody even heard... I don't know, actually. It's not exactly well known. I, mean, <laughs> I, I had never heard of it. Um, so this is a game that never got a translation into English until its DS port, but um, was originally published on the SNES. And we're using the SNES version here probably because it is easier to emulate and like display, to put it yeah. simply. Yeah, it was um, super simple for me to just drop it on and get it going. I highly recommend checking out the DS version if you do have a DS. I think it is the better version of this game. Um, but that's where I first checked it out. It turned out it is a part of the Mystery Dungeon series. So if you have played the Mystery Dungeon Pokemon games, it's actually by the same developer. But instead of being, um, you know, a licensed game, this is their own original property that they spend a lot of time on. The, so I find it to be richer than the Pokemon games. The Pokemon games are more of like a more of like a dungeon crawler anyway than a, than a roguelike, right? I mean, kind of, but they have plenty of procedurally generated elements, and sure. some of the mechanics from those games do get transposed into the other Mystery Dungeon games. I think like, there are also um, Dragon Quest Mystery Dungeon games as well. Yeah, I, I mean, I think I think you know we just got we just got done talking about how like the definition of roguelike is probably a bit too more rigid, um, or like less rigid than than people get credit for. But like, I I feel like you have to have that like progress doesn't carry between runs in order for it to See, be roguelike and I, I didn't get that from the pokemon games i think that it it depends because i think that um roguelike as a genre it doesn't really work for me because it doesn't describe your mechanisms of play how you interact with the game itself i mean right. rogue legacy is technically a roguelike but that's just like a slappy castlevania game um with occasional randomness in it i think if you view games as having roguelike elements um, it, it's probably easier to wrap your head around. So I would consider this to be a dungeon crawler with roguelike elements. Okay. Um, whereas something like the mystery dungeon games, I would say, are are probably lighter on the roguelike elements. Um, but I wouldn't say they're less less of a roguelike. They're just kind of an easier one, if that makes sense. Sure, sure. There are also bad roguelikes, too. Don't get me wrong. Like, you can bang your head up against something... Uh, quite a few times and not have a good time, but I think the appeal of this game should be pretty immediate. First off, it's very pretty. Especially for a SNES game. Traveler with a rain hat. Don't see those much around these days. Oh, you got a... You got an upside-down visor with a pre-frayed brim, eh? You have wraparound sunglasses. I don't see those much <laughs> these days. Is that a rainbow tint? Is that a is that a Dale Earnhardt flag on your truck? We don't see those around much these days. Is that a, a retainer with Edward Scissorhands on it? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, let me let me clarify. Dale Earnhardt Sr. <laughs> the god, the goat. The number one. The greatest to ever do it. If it, there are certain rooms where it is not safe to make fun of that man in, and that's a fact. <laughs> this is not one of those rooms. <laughs> You've got a big sign on your wall that says the Dale Earnhardt Haters Club. <laughs> You're talking weasel. That's right. That's your little bro. Yeah, that's kind of sick. I like that whenever I'm walking south, he gets in front of me. And whenever that's I'm right. walking north, he stays behind. You can see his wiggling little butt. Yeah. It's cute. Now, this game is also ported to the N64 Game Boy Color and Dreamcast, by the way. So, is that not a sequel on the N64? No, it's just a remake in 3D. Oh, ooh, is it, is it a good remake in 3D? I haven't played it, because it only got an English translation, like, a few months ago. 
Um, the Dreamcast one, I believe, does not have an English translation at all. Okay. But um, the this is the second game. I don't remember what the first game came out on. The third game is Wii and PSP exclusive, and then the fourth game is basically every modern system. But I played the living shit of it, uh, shit out of it on a, uh, a Vita when it came out originally. This is how you know it's a fan translation because they use terms like dirt map. That's true. <laughs> I mean, it says num three on the track, number one in our hearts. That's true. <laughs> God damn it, that's good though. <laughs> Is this a way to like save items between runs? Kind of. So um, you can save them between runs, but you can also teleport things into that storage by placing items in the pot when you're in the dungeon. Okay. So you, it's a storehouse that you do, have limited access to when you're dungeon crawling. And all pots, and pots are a mechanic in this game that allow you to just store four to five items in any given pot as a way to save inventory. So even if you didn't want to, you know, use them, you can use it for storage. Or, throw it, or you can throw it at enemies as a weapon. Shit in here, cause this is a new run. Beam Splash X, the great Sid Menon said it's number wonderer. Love it. Love to see it. K Weirix has been leveling my WHM and <laughs> Final Fantasy XI while listening. Taste the trunk. Hey, you got a nice bob there, kid. It's cool. Okay. Hell yeah, Dave. <laughs> I respect anyone playing Final Fantasy XI these days. By the way, that takes. That takes a consistency of spirit and soul. <laughs> you getting you getting put in jail? That's what I'd do. You play Final Fantasy XI? No, uh, I do know you can get put in jail. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, I told you about when I played a I played a mud called Threshold uh, okay. for a while, and I absolutely got like I I I think I think it's about the closest I've ever come to a psychotic break trying to play that game. Um, and I got to a point where I was just like, you know, they, I joined the fighters guild and I got like, I think I just died one too many times and like people on there were being dicks about, about RP. And I was like, and so I just went into the, uh, I went into the, the warehouse and I took all the fighters, fighter guilds weapons and I threw them into the forge and then like. I got, like, chased around. The, it was probably a good, like, 30 minutes where people were, like, actively hunting for me in-game. Like, it would have been easy for a mod to just be like, that guy's disconnected. No, they hunted me. Um, they finally cornered me in the town square, and I got beheaded in front of everybody. That was a, that was a good-ass time. I'll tell you what. <laughs> I want to log on to a video game where 30 people hate me and harass me for 45 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> That's ill, dude. That's amazing. We should live stream doing a mud sometime. Oh my god, the, the, the threshold is still around too, and there's, it's run by this guy named Aristotle, and he like, bro, yeah, yeah, like, bro. <laughs> How do you feel about uh, Aristotle and his wisdom? Uh, I I I remember him being pretty pompous, but I mean, his he was named Aristotle, so. <laughs> Again, what do you expect? You know, where I come from in the country, we don't think much of Aristotle. We think a lot about Dale Earnhardt, though. <laughs> the philosopher number three. <laughs> the golden condor lives in the golden city. Hick. Man. Hi, <laughs> man. He says, I bet my man has opinions on modern gaming. <laughs> <laughs> calling up aristotle to get his take on horizon zero dawn <laughs> yeah i you know what i'm i'm game let's fucking play uh let's play threshold one of these days that'd be fun yeah i feel like muds are the sort of thing that is just like if you're old you might know what they are but 
you'd be not not really had any reason to be exposed to them yeah. in the past 20 years. And I, you know what? I'm I'm all about experiencing games the way they were meant to be played. So I'm gonna go ahead and get a landline installed. <laughs> You're laughing, but that sounds like something you would do. It's like, yo, I paid eighty dollars to get this Raspberry Pi that emulates a dial-up modem. Um, that's extremely close to what I was setting up for Dreamcast. So. <laughs> uh... <laughs> Starting a petition to bring back like home phone lines so that we can get that that beautiful scratchy noise. <laughs> Sid in the chat says Dale Ernestottle. <laughs> Aristotle did die by going full speed into a wall. So. Out of Audrey McClendon, who also did that in the modern times. Oh, Jesus. It's a really... He was, like, this super, like, rich millionaire guy. He had everything going on in his life. And then he drove his, uh... His Ferrari into the Holland Tunnel. Just full speed. It's... It's not... It wasn't an accident. Like, it, that's how he chose to go out. Which is insane to me. So, this dungeon... Is this the actual game? This is where it go? Uh, no. This is a skill dungeon. Oh, well, I don't have any of that, so... Yeah, but I, I would avoid that. Um... You can leave the town, and there you go. Wanderers acknowledge other wanderers by saying, "Excuse me." Put your right hand on the B button. Hold up. Let's just fucking test that. <laughs> I'm gonna use the <laughs> left hand for the B button. It's pretty sweet that, like, Rogue starts out and it's like, drink the girl's potion, you might go blind. <laughs> and Sharon, Sharon starts out by going, be polite to strangers, jack off, do it, please, you, you need this. You will die in these dungeons. Okay. Alright. You can try it on me whenever you want! <laughs> me and the homies got together and we were just, like, swapping spaces for hours. Look at how cute Ked Tengu is. Okay, so A to attack. Mm -hmm. And you can attack diagonally as well, but you ha may have to hold the button down to align yourself first. I think it's the R button. Oh, okay. Uh, the Bean Bandit! Wait, R is supposed to like hold you in place? There's a, there's a button that will hold you in place so that you can rearrange the direction you're facing um, R, without taking oh, a tap. R, R like, locks you to diagonal movement. Okay, that works. Maybe L then locks you to directionals. Oh my god, we're so fucking good at this game. <laughs> Sid says, it's early enough in the Mystery Dungeon series that a seismologist thinks he can figure out how this shit works. Good point. Ooh, okay, so this is a fun thing that Sheeran does. Go ahead and aim your character straight ahead of okay. those enemies. Oh, Adam? Can yep, Adam. That? Can I do that without taking a turn? Uh, you should be able to, but I gotta figure out which button it is. Because there is, like, a rotation oh, button. Oh, uh, why? Okay. Why? Okay. So then, eat that dragon herb. How do I do that? There Go ahead and bring the menu up. Wait, drink it? Eat it. But it's or drink it. Drink it, I guess, yeah. That, that seems weird. I think you'll appreciate it. Ooh! 71 <laughs> points. It doesn't seem necessary for that little guy. <laughs> and it's a uh, it's it 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 does breakthrough, so you can use it to kill multiple enemies at once. Oh my god, I hit him so hard. Oh my god, I'm a god. This game's easy compared to Rogue a little bit. I'm winning. <laughs> Video game trees, though. This game is popping off with some video game trees. Yeah, it, actually, some... it looks beautiful. <laughs> it's a really pretty game. Slanted pot. Okay, so you might not know what that is until you put something inside it.
This is the, the next floor. Mm -hmm. Although, if you check your map, there are still items you haven't collected, too. Yeah, I figured. But this is a game that's not going to punish you for that, ever, so... Okay, staffs. Staffs are cool. Um, staffs have a limited swing, kind of like a wand does, but it depends on the staff how many charges they have, and you don't know until you swing it. This waved. What did it do? Not sure. Oh, is he just... Did it freeze him? Yep. I think it's a staff of paralysis. Oh my god, I'm gonna play so much of this game. <laughs> I like that you know that from within five minutes. Yeah, I mean... <laughs> but you're not wrong, that's immediately how I felt it when I picked it up for the first time. <laughs> and not only that, but this is like a perfect mobile game, because you can you can have a, a save in the middle of a run. Yeah. So, you know, yeah, it's a, it's great. Jaime says, is this game also procedurally generated? Yes, it stinking is. I just, I had no idea that there were games like this on uh, on Super Nintendo. And done to this level of craft, too, I think is a big thing. Because a game like this on a console could feel really bad. So is it a shield know. something I would equip or use? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. <laughs> Um, Sid says, remember way back on the first screenshots of this on Aeon Genesis translation page, I thought Siren's big hat was a bowl cut. <laughs> that, you know, that checks out, though. It does. It does. <laughs> He's got that tonsure fit. Like oh, a monk. Oh, mammal meat, but I've had no luck so far. Here, take this and give me a hand. Ooh, Bufo Staff, okay. So if you hit an enemy with a Bufo Staff, they will turn into meat. Um, but if you're because your Bufo Staff has no charges, you have to throw it. And wait until you fight a, a, a what is it, a Mammon, I think they're called or something? Is there a way for me to... I guess probably I should move up or down to get that thing to approach me, rather than having to walk in and absorb a hit. I believe there's a button that allows you to walk in place, um, but I gotta figure out which one it is. So the mammals are those little guys, so I gotta I have to hit one of those with the staff. And what your staff is... also has zero charges, so just throw it instead of using it. Right, but I can't throw it at this guy. Is what I'm saying because he's not the right kind of enemy. Yeah, I mean, if you want to fulfill that dude's quest, meat is kind of like a special item type in this game that turns you into the monster you eat. Um, so I think that's just trying to teach you that mechanic, basically. Oh, okay. But it's not something where it's like, I gotta be nice to that no. dude so that... Basically, the way to think about being nice to people in this game is that it almost always pays off in the long term. They don't let you really, like, oh, keep one. stats or upgrades or anything, but the people in the game do remember how you treated them. Oh, good point. Sid also says you can attack air to pass the turn. Oh, okay, cool. Come on, asshole, get back here. There's also a dash button, which is holding down the B button. And if you hold down the B button when you move, you'll basically move in one direction until you hit a wall. Oh, perfect. Yeah, holding control and rogue does the same thing. Okay, A plus B passes turns without moving, and it also heals HP. Okay. Oh, yeah, this is worth doing. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, it is tasty. I don't, I don't care about your name. Cook me more food. <laughs> Look, chef, I don't care that you're a chef. Cook for me. <laughs> so from now on, because you help the chef, when he shows up, he will give you stuff or give you quests. Awesome. Is 
that all? You got a funky little shield too. Yeah. Fountain stream. Which is the um, the Fred Meyer version of Mountain Dew. <laughs> Yeah, this game I'm trying to think. Nice. It's it's real clean. I'm trying to think what the like the great value version of Mountain Dew Baja Blast would be, and it's like Mountain Stream South California Sunrise. Now, let's go. If I get a Fang Staff, and then I get another Fang Staff, is it automatically the same staff? Yes. Okay. Will it they won't combine different? together. They'll take the same space, though. Right. Will it be different between runs? Like no. The, the name of the staff will be consistent in terms of what it does. Okay. Although, if it's a something that deals damage, the damage may vary. Gotcha. What do you think? Are you gonna Are you going to hit up this lady who you met in a dungeon? Let's do something fun. Close your eyes for a minute. Come on. Come get, on. I'm going to get a handy. <laughs> what I, what happened? <laughs> oh, I'm just blind. Cool. Uh, she rules, by the way. Yeah. I mean, I'd rather not be blind, but we'll, you know, we'll deal with it. So I don't want to spoil too much here, so all, all your fans out there, close your ears, of course. Um, the trick to her is that you have to let her do that like six times. <laughs> and then on the sixth time, she says something like, you are so gullible and so stupid that I do not know how you're alive. I will become, uh, I will travel with you and become a traveling partner with you to make sure you don't die. That rules. It's so good. <laughs> It's like, yeah, does Rogue have great mechanics? Sure, but is there a lady who's mean to you? No. <laughs> also, that that uh, Wood Elf shot me from, like, three screens away. Yeah, enemies have projectiles in this game. Which is uh, fucked up, and if you think about it. I think that should be illegal. <laughs> well, you get them, too. The arrows in this game are actually incredibly good. It keeps turning me. Yep, that's the trap. Oh, I'm on a trap. Oh, no, no, I hit the trap. Yep. Yeah, now it's dead. For future reference, you can disable traps by hitting them with your sword before you step on them. Do I have to have a sword? No, I just think anything, even if you don't have a weapon. Yeah, it'd be, it'd be nice to get a weapon at some point, I think. Yeah, probably. You can equip the arrows like a weapon, but it's their limited usage, of course. Oh, I have to do it before I step on it. Gotcha. Yeah. So how would I have known it was there? Sometimes you see them. Sometimes you have scrolls that will like reveal all traps on a floor. Oh my god, why? Stop! <laughs> yeah, the daikons suck, dude. Oh, it's because of my speed. Oh shit. Oh shit, I'm fucked. <laughs> Now would be the time to start throwing your items around. I keep forgetting I got them. It's like maybe an, a, a nice uh, staff swing here or two. Yeah, no! No! That was a bad idea! <laughs> oh, you found the switchy staff. Yeah! <laughs> I need to use it again. God, it didn't do it, did it? You gotta eat some food, bro. Or a potion or something. You're getting items, so as long as you stay alive, you should be okay. God. 
Did I? Did I do it? <laughs> yep, you died. You died a fashionista. Okay, okay. So, the one thing about this game is that the roguelike elements are not actually very friendly. You do not get to keep stuff between runs, um, unless it's in a warehouse. And there's no levels to keep, there's no permanent upgrades in this game. What will happen, though, is that your actions will influence the towns and communities that you take place in. Meaning that you'll have the opportunity to slowly improve the world and have more people and NPCs to help you the longer you play. And I misspoke. There is no Sheeran 1. This is technically Mystery Dungeon 2 colon Sheeran. The first Mystery Dungeon game uh, features uh, the merchant from Dragon Quest. You stepped Which is a good game device, too. Device, lukewarm water came blasting out. <laughs> <laughs> your rice balls got drenched and rotted. <laughs> die soon. Oh, that's kind of cool. It changes the color of the text box when you get close to death. So just in case you're not paying enough attention. <laughs> uh, which I'm not. <laughs> what good is the is the gold? You can spend it in towns. To upgrade your weapons, permanently upgrade like shops and stuff in the towns themselves. Okay, so I get so there's gonna be times where I get to towns like during mm -hmm. runs. Mm -hmm. Okay. And there are also um, items that you can feed gold into in order to make them stronger, like projectiles. Like oh, it's gonna eat a hundred gold, but it's gonna do fireball damage. One of the pure joys of this game is how much item diversity there is and weapon diversity there is. Um, because you never quite know what you're going to get in a given run once you've seen most of the game. Sid says, people joke about smearing jelly on your screen in modern games when your health is low, but a red text box is what jelly looked like in 1995. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, we got a club. Bro, time has passed us by. Modern jelly is so fucked up. It's all sorts of non-red colors. That club is awesome. I mean, it's like not just a club, but it's got nails in it. I saw him following me. Here's the question, Mike. Could you pull off a striped cape like that? I mean... I... Maybe? With the red accessories? Yeah. <laughs> a giant hat? Yeah. Or a, I mean, or a good enough bowl cap? Yeah. <laughs> Man's going to work looking like Oliver Tree. Oh, a semicircle pot. What's that do? No, you will not know until you put something in it. Oh, Katana. How do I see this? Like, do I have to identify this club to see, like, any information if it's, about it? Or? If it's yellow, that means it's unidentified and might have something special with it. If it's white, then it's normal. Okay, but like, if I had, say, a white katana and a white club, I mean, I would say mm -hmm. the katana's probably better, but how would I know? Go back one screen, and you'll see your stats. Oh, okay. Uh, so sword strength is two. Uh, let's see. Sword strength is six. We That's are right, baby. than God. <laughs> Who famously could not create a sword. <laughs> Is that, that fucking one of my favorite Simpsons quotes of all time where he's like, when I was holding that gun, I felt that I felt a sense of unbelievable power like God must feel when he's holding a gun. Uh, that might be the best episode of The Simpsons, too. Yeah. Six points of damage from the ground. Rictulos makes a good point. You should put the club into the pot. What does that do? See what it, it lets you see what the pot does. Okay. 
I mean, kill this thing first, obviously, but... Put... Oh, I put it on the ground. That's not what I wanted. You want to go, um... <laughs> go to the... 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 pot itself, yeah. What did it do? Well... Now let's go to C. Okay. And does it tell you the items that are in there? Yeah. Okay, and they haven't really changed? It just says club. Yeah, so we don't know. It might just be a storage pot. It might be doing something to the items. Okay. If it's a storage pot, then it's like six inventory slots in one item, which is pretty sweet. Yeah, that's cool. But a lot of the times the pots are also transformative. Dude, this, uh, this katana fucks. Yeah, it's pretty great. I'm feeling, uh, pretty lucky right now. I think <laughs> this might be the run. <laughs> Where you get to level 10? Yeah, uh, we might be going all the way. <laughs> Why are you laughing? I don't understand. It's 100 levels. Yeah, yeah. No, no, no. We're gonna, yeah. get, we're gonna get there. We're doing it okay. this run. That's cool, I believe Before in you. Before I quit video games. I hope you find the rocket launcher. <laughs> there is a weapon you get later that allows you to destroy walls, which is amazing. Oh, there are rules. Dash 14 damage. It's never going to get better than that. <laughs> 14 is the highest number there is. Oh my god. Stop missing. That's a, that's Mr. Show sketch. I'm just realizing. Oh yeah, yeah, I remember that one. Remember, 24 is the biggest number there is. Boss, what about 25? <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, once you have a big sword, these early stages are pretty easy to just like skip through and not really worry about. You're not gonna get great items until you get to this rock section. Uh, yeah, you just killed a shitload of dudes very easily. <laughs> Gotta do some walking, get my health back. So do you notice that you aren't losing a bunch of stuff from the daikons hitting you this time? No, no, I didn't notice that. What's up? I think you might have had a cursed shield. Oh, God damn it. Oh, another katana. Can I dual wield? I don't think so. Although I think you can throw it like an item. Those things are tricky. You have to kind of like diagonal walk right. towards them if you want to approach them. So the um, newest version, which is the Sheeran in the Tower and the Dice of Fate, I think is the, the full subtitle. The premise of it is that you have six different hundred stage dungeons. Uh -huh. And the hub world allows you to visit any six of them at any time. So it's a completely like wide open deal. Oh, sick. Yeah, it's really cool. Okay, so the next time that I come back, because you said like the, the staff, like the staff will do the same thing. Is it, it should, going to yeah. still be identified, or do I have to remember? Um, it If it says that it's not identified, like if it's yellow, uh -huh. um, then there might need be need to identify it for further like special things. Uh, think of it like Diablo. Like You've got some prefixes in front of that pot, probably. Right, but but if I pick up another one of these like on my next run, is it going to say decoy staff? It depends. It, it like... For the staffs, they're usually pretty consistent from staff to staff, but you could pick up a katana with totally different stats or totally different modifiers, depending on whether or not it's identified. Like, there are multiple different types sure. of each weapon with multiple different effects. Although, to be frank, most of the time you're just going to get plain Jane stuff. Like, the really rare, hard to find stuff is it doesn't show up that often. <clears throat> Can I still get. Anything from a rotten rice ball, or is it just going to hurt me? 
there's a chance that you get poisoned. Okay. Whereas the Otagiri so I believe just restores your my HP uh. <laughs> my HP dropped and I'm blind. <laughs> it's like eating a sandwich you find behind the radiator. It's coming from the diagonal and you're blinded, so they're not you're not gonna see them. You might want to heal. I don't... Oh, I had a dragon here, but... Alright. Unfortunately, eating the rice ball is what did you in. Yeah. Which is a beautiful thing about this game. Like, it does feel like it's a decision you made, right? It wasn't really foisted on you. Yeah, no, I, and I, I, I feel like... I feel like I knew the risks. <laughs> I knew the risk of eating spoiled food. Trust me. <laughs> Been there, done that. If you go to the bar before you go to the dungeon, I believe someone there will give you a free rice ball. Oh, nice. Oh, God. You want to hear? Yeah, sure. Why not? Yeah, you do. One level shot. It's normal strength. What's what's funny is that this is also explaining explaining things about the way that rogue works. Yep. <laughs> like there's it's things that I knew, but like if you didn't, like you would definitely be able to carry a bunch of this knowledge over to that game. I think it's fair to say this game is a pretty strong tribute to Rogue. Yeah. Um it it's doing a lot of the same things that Rogue does, and well, too. But I think, for example, the pots are a great example of something where you're not going to get that in Rogue, and they're very mechanically crunchy. There's so many different types of pots, and they all do different things. You can get a pot that works like an identify scroll and identifies anything that's in it. Um, you can get a pot that turns every item into it into an explosive, so that when you throw the pot, you get like a firebomb. All sorts of stuff. B.A. the Shrimp... Rutila says, cursed items are a staple of roguelikes, and I agree. I'm sorry I didn't notice that earlier, but um, I love the fact that you can be randomly like damaged for just wearing any old thing you find in the road. Um, and that, to me, is an interesting mechanic. It means that it's not just about collecting loot. Oh, I can put rice balls in a pot. <laughs> That's actually, uh, that would have been super useful. I mean, although, they got rotten literally at the very beginning of the run. I think I walked, like, because... three, three steps and it ruined my food. And you stepped on a trap, right? So you yeah. can't really do shit about that. But yeah, that guy will give you a rice ball every time you restart the game. Okay. Which is a good example of, like, what the game is like when it comes to making procedural progress. Like, it's not going to just give you a bunch of stats or items, but there will be townspeople who help you and give you useful shit. I want to say the Air Slash Scroll is like a global nuke. A blank scroll, yay! Blank scrolls are awesome in this game. Really? Because Yes, because you can pay someone to write whatever you want on them. Meaning that you get the scroll of your choice if you find a Scrivener. Oh, that rules. Uh, I heard the click of a switch. Traps popped all over the ground. Cool. It's a trap trap. Everything looks strange. Oops. Ah, uh, they let you walk diagonally into doors. This game's better than Rogue already. Yeah, that's right. You can do the Kramer back step. Yeah. The Kramer dash. Kramer step. <laughs> Beams. <laughs> Sid says, Haha, have them write butt on the scroll. 
This guy is a fucking card. A card that says butt on it. Oh, is that little uh, sound that it plays when I level up? <laughs> it said it gave you traps, but it seems like you're mostly just hallucinating. Yeah. That's cool. Oh, god damn it. <laughs> god damn it. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, does it only go off once? I was going to use it as a shortcut. <laughs> Time Theft Jeff, howdy, by the way, says those spring traps are hilarious and I can't help but agree. They rock. I do respect that all those basically just drops a bunch of acid traps all over the place. Yes. I love the idea of a Looney Tunes roguelike, where, like, there's giant mallet traps, and you have to, you know, open Acme boxes. Yeah, we're gonna equip this stuff with little to no regard for what it is. That's cool. I'm kind. Someone says they're hungry, I'll throw a rice ball at them. Someone says they're about to peel over. Kind of <laughs> sure are. How do I say I'm hungry? <laughs> I think it's telling you how to help NPCs you find in the dungeon. Although you can throw a rice ball at the man if you want to. You know, give him botulism. You know what? Fuck it. Oh, oh, it hurt him! <laughs> Goodbye, kind old man. He's kind. He doesn't mind that you threw rotten food at him. Nice. Oh, so if I just if I just attack a uh, area, it'll uh... it'll reveal all traps in that square. Kind of got me wanting to just swing everywhere I walk. <laughs> Most of the traps aren't too bad. The blindness one, I think, is probably the worst. Stone staff. I wish NPCs had a different circle besides red on the map. It's interesting because I think it turned it red because you threw some shit at him. I mean, other NPCs have appeared the same way, I thought. Oh, okay, okay. So your shield and your club are, like, totally safe? That's cool. Yeah. What are the odds? <laughs> Not high. Walk into it. Merked. Merked. Hitting him with the no scope. Oh. It seems like you actually got some like strength here to get into the, the stone part of the dungeon now. Yeah. Big pot scroll. Does that make pots big? <laughs> that, that rules. You should just read it and see what it does. That's kind of what I expected. You get a big pot? Yep. <laughs> Wish you knew what the pot does. Yeah, I don't really have anything to toss in it either. Maybe a light scroll? What would that do? A light scroll, like, lightens up a dark room. Which well, I don't think you're in yeah, any risk of. Like, you know. Oops. God damn it, what? <laughs> Wait, what? And now it's gone? <laughs> what did it do? I 
I put myself inside the pot for some reason. Oh, it was a hiding pot. Okay. Oh, jeez. No, the hiding pots, if you jump inside of them, enemies will walk away from you like you're an item. Okay. That's sick. It is. It's really I good, I'd actually. I wish I'd known about it, but also, yeah, that's <laughs> sick. Ruchilo says, Big Pot Scroll sounds like a giant. I agree. Is there... What's the downside to... I guess food, right? For hanging out too long? Yeah, yeah. You can you can hit stamina pretty bad. Um, like, I don't think food's particularly hard to find in this game. But at the same time, there is definitely, like... You'll feel a cap as to the point of continuing on. Like, like right now where it says I'm gonna starve to death? Or, or, as I was going to say, clearly there's nothing else on this floor, right? You, you, you got most of it, even if you don't know all of it. But yeah, you need some food, bro. Yeah, yeah, I'm just, I'm just draining. Um, I think it's safe to say this run is, uh, over. Probably. R.I.P., my friend. Rip in pieces. <laughs> I believe the way that the game is set up is that there's another town after the 10th floor and then a second town after the 30th floor. I feel like I've been getting fucked on the food front. Kind of, yeah. Yeah. I mean, the fact that your rice balls keep getting ruined is not a good thing. But also, you really haven't had a lot of storage pots, either. All your pots have been wacky. <laughs> Jesus! <laughs> <laughs> the game likes you. It doesn't seem like it. <laughs> like, <laughs> what the fuck? Okay. <laughs> yeah, we don't we don't talk about that run. Other than writing it onto a uh, giant sign in the middle of the town telling everyone you suck. <laughs> I took one step out of town, shit my pants, and died. Imagine that you wake up every morning and you go outside and there's just a giant wooden placard that says Mike's failure board. <laughs> Um, Richelo says, any other towns, or do you have to do the last 70 floors of that one? I think there's one after 60 as well, but after floor 30, you start getting more town elements showing up in dungeons, like merchants and, uh, restaurants and stuff like that. So, it's, it's not like a, you're totally helpless once you're in the big golden dungeon. Goddamn. Alright, can we fucking... Give me a little breathing room when I spawn in, please. I didn't expect to get camped. We hate campers. Ooh, yeah, this is good stuff. <laughs> wow, a rice ball and a sword. That's, that is actually a sweet bounty for this point in the game. Right. That's almost a guaranteed to getting to, fi to floor... Five or six. Would you normally, if you were playing, would you go down the floor by now, or would you keep exploring? Um, I would. Much here. I would probably go pretty heavy on the exploring on the first floor, just in the hope that I find a weapon. If I have a weapon, I'm probably rushing towards the rock levels, like three or four. Okay. Um, most of these early forest ones have really low drop rates, and if you do drop, it's like random scrolls and stuff, and stuff you don't really need. Once you have a weapon, though, you're pretty you're pretty good for getting to where you need to go. You do start seeing a lot more rice balls after Fuller 5, so as long as you can survive that long, you should be okay. That's good. Is there a way there to also an... tell that I'm hungry aside from just it? Or is it you can check... satiation? <laughs> yeah, satiation.
the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> There's Ewoks in this forest? <laughs> you you deserve to find a speeder bike, is what I'm saying. <laughs> it is kind of sick that you can just get hit with a big log and survive. I mean... I mean, it's just like real life, am I right? It's true. <laughs> I I honestly don't know. I don't know if you could survive a log, my friend. Yeah, I mean, it, it, Mythbusters never did it. We we hit we crushed Jamie Heineman with a tree just to see what would happen. <laughs> it's literally just like we've got the junior Mythbusters team to stand on his big bullseye. <laughs> We're gonna test and see if their bones work. <laughs> the only thing busted here is their sternum. <laughs> Yeah, we need a modern show like Mistbusters that's just about throwing things at people. It's like, what would happen if you shot a bowling ball out of a cannon? Well, the junior Mistbusters here are going to accept that. They're okay with being hit with a cannon. It's fine. For science. What's the worst that could happen? That's right. Science is about optimism. I will always instantly put on a katana. I don't care if it's cursed. <laughs> That shield's probably worth it, too, honestly. I do like the visual representation of you get a new item, it shows up on your sprite. Good night, Jeff. Take care. Says night, y'all. Have fun, and same to you. Yeah, nice. <laughs> he just gave That's me, an... like, turned my rice ball into a large rice ball. Yes, but he will do that to all of your items if you let him hit you. He can turn your sword into a rice ball. Well, we won't let him do that. <laughs> I think that was best case scenario, honestly. Absolutely. And that's an example of an an of like a monster where you don't necessarily fear it, but you do have a pretty strong incentive to use ranged weapons at it. Oh, so something's cursed because I just got slowed that time? Okay, yeah, probably. I have no way of telling until I can identify one of them? Well, take off your shield and see if that makes a difference the next time you fight one. Oh, so you can actually take off cursed stuff? Yeah, you should be able to. Okay, you can't do that in Rogue. If it's cursed, you're stuck with it until you can remove the curse. That makes sense. There might be a mechanic like that in here. But I don't, I don't know if it's called curse or something else. I don't. I know your weapons can get rusty. I like that the the rice monster is just kind of vibing. You don't have to fight him. He's just looking for rice. I know, but what if I fuck him up with this bamboo staff? Yeah, that's a good point. That didn't do anything, apparently. <laughs> I mean, you don't know that yet. Nice. How's your satiation level? Uh, 62%. I'm okay. Not bad. I would assume not bad enough that I would want to eat yet. I usually don't eat until I'm under 20. You just get the chance of finding rice balls often enough that it never feels worth blowing, like, blowing them early is a good move. Right. Level five. You're actually kind of gliding through this run. Yeah, this one's not bad. Back to Mountain Stream, baby. The return of Dr. Pop. Mm -hmm. You already found the staircase to get out? <laughs> yeah. I hate those little things so much. keep forgetting I have to be face the uh, right way first. So wait, can I... 
If I equip it, it unequips my katana, or no, it's a it's a secondary item, okay. I believe. Or at least that's how it works in the DS version. I've got it. <laughs> okay. You can throw a vision herb at her to heal her. Oh, okay. So it's not like okay. Ooh, hey, look what I got. That's right. Uh, excuse me? It just dropped at her feet. <laughs> oh, weird. Okay. Can you switch places with her? Oh, yeah. That was a very Beavis moment. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be damned. I'll be damned. <laughs> I have a fun one for you. So um, I've been with my parents this whole week at their house, right? Uh -huh. And um, my dad, <laughs> I, we were watching the Beavis and Butthead do America, just yeah. my wife and I, because that's what we do for fun. And my dad starts laughing uncontrollably, just like dying, dying. And I'm like, what's going on? And he goes, I've never seen Beavis and Butthead before. I love it. It's so amazing. <laughs> <laughs> And then he goes, it's so stupid. <laughs> so should I try throwing uh, it again, do you think? I think so. Maybe get some oh, distance on go. it? That time it worked. Okay. okay. Power race one point. I will take that. And from now on, she will be a random NPC that shows up in dungeons. Nice. She won't. She won't always be blind either. Sometimes she will just give you shit or permanently raise one of your stats. So it, it it's nice. The NPC system that they have here is very different than Rogue because Rogue, you're very alone. Um, but also it kind of accentuates the randomness by including randomly good things too. Damn, those things hit hard. Yes, and they poison. It's worth eating a restorative here. This is not... Do I have one? Oh, maybe not. Fuck. I don't think I do. Um, Slumber Scroll? Is that, that going to sleep him? It, it should sleep the enemy, yes. Or should I confuse him? Confusion would still allow him to swing at you when you're that close, which would be the thing I'd be worried about. So now, should I attack him, or will that wake him up? Uh, that will wake him up. So I would get some distance, and maybe pick him off with some arrows. No, but I That'll give you time. Herb now. Oh, you should definitely just do that, then. Make sure you're facing in his direction, though. For the dragon herb? For dr is that restorative, though, right? It is, but it also does a fireball directly in front of you. So oh, that will kill him. Oh, shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, one thing I like is that when you do get a nice item, it feels very powerful. And remember, if you want to restore health, you can just stand in place by holding A and B. As as I was doing that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm I'm watching the stream stream, so I'm behind. Right. <laughs> Well, look at you. You've mastered the mechanics of the game. You're a real wanderer yourself. Go wander into rural Illinois and see if it's the same thing. I don't think you can get any better at this game than I have. <laughs> I really think this is it. Hell yeah, brother. Stop. Stop. Drop. Shut him down, open up, shot. Oh my god. That is, that is the best. <laughs> what? Just walking back and forth is yeah. a way to attract enemies. <laughs> that's exactly what, that's what I do in, in Rogue. I just like zip back and forth and it, it just makes sense. To come towards me. <laughs> I have to take a very long path back. This is annoying. 
At least all the monsters are dead. Oh yeah? They do respawn after a certain point in time. What's this but... guy? Oh fuck, that is a thief? He will hit you and steal your gold, but if you kill him, he's worth a fuckload of money. Um, you have a limited amount of turns because he will teleport off the map. Does Confuse make him less likely to hit? Um, it makes it more likely that he will whiff, like he'll attack in the wrong direction or move in the wrong direction. What it's not a hit, hit. It's not a hit percentage itself. Okay. What would you uh, what would you do here? You think uh, maybe? Uh... I would swing, um, and then try to chase him down with arrows. I mean, it's not like you have a bunch of places to spend that money right now, so there's it doesn't make sense for me to risk a lot. <laughs> what did you do? <laughs> yeah, well, that works too. <laughs> Those are also good enemies to test um, unfamiliar staffs on. Oh, here's another one. I feel like I've got a lot of money now. Uh, yeah. Actually, you have a shitload of money for this part in the game. If you get past level 10, you're going to be able to upgrade some shit, my friend. Wait, what is this? Oh, that's right, it's level 5, not level 10. I forgot. Yeah, uh, another uh, evidence that it's a fan translation. Oh, what? Your favorite games don't have slurs in them? Excuse me? I thought you were a gamer. Is It is the most late 90s thing in the world, though, to play a SNES game with a uh, translation patch that uses rude words. I will say I watch, like, a lot of, like, fan sub, um, fan sub, like, Sentai series, and the amount of times characters tell other characters to fuck off <laughs> is that, that is a... That's perfect for me. I love it. <laughs> My favorite is when it's like a very recognizable show. Like a lot of the old Dragon Ball Z subs back in the day used to have swearing in them. So it's just like Goku flying up to Frieza and being like, damn you, you bastard. I'm going to kill you. <laughs> so what's the, uh, wh what are we thinking here? Like, what do I need to... Uh, talk to all the NPCs in town. See who's willing to take your money. Money, money for sale. Excuse me, can I interest you in some money? Yeah, if I could temper it. Turns it into a plus one, yeah, and you can sure. keep paying to get it bigger. Just probably see if there's any other places to spend this uh, cash first, though. Yeah, probably. Um, so our mutual friend Alex and I played a lot of Sheeran together when we were in college. Uh -huh. Um, and his strategy was to get a katana and continually store it in a warehouse. And so, like, when he decided to do a quote-unquote full run, he'd have a katana plus 35. Jesus Christ. But then he would die. <laughs> and it's like weeks of preparation flushed right down the toilet. Which sucks. <laughs> That's such a bad feeling. <laughs> Jaime says, the old DBZ fan subs has at least three times as many you bastard as the official ones. I agree. I agree, and that's true. Before... And honestly, I think the dubbers should have paid attention. Before throwing a pot to break it open, check your bracers. Okay. Which can affect your throwing. Um, there's also a lower part of the village south um, with a couple more buildings. I think Dragon Ball maybe should have marketed Trunks as like the guy who can swear. He comes from the future where swearing is okay. Do you let future Bulma swear to swear then too? Um, I mean, let's be real. Bulma should be swearing at all times, like yeah, even true. in even in original DBZ as a teenager, 
Also, someone should teach her how to smoke cloves. <laughs> as long as we're in fantasy world. Gourmet Gramps. I mean, it says, I do remember the Tsunami tri trailers hyping the hell out of Trunks. I never got to that era of Dragon Ball when it was originally aired, so I only watched those in, in subs and real media at, at probably like 40p resolution. Not 240p, just 40p. <laughs> <laughs> the way the good lord intended. I it, it's 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 all you had in the late nineties if you were if you're old like me. Like the early internet ninety six, ninety seven, ninety eight, for me, I because we didn't have America Online, was just like trying to watch Dragon Ball and ECW on real streaming real movie players. And in case you were wondering, yeah, streaming video over dial up was not good. It was not a fun no. experience. Not finding a lot of people to want my money here. That guy you just talked to, next time you come into town, will have something you can invest in because you talked okay. to him. <laughs> that rules. It's really fun to have a rogue that, that like is having fun with it, for lack of a better way to put it. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, it's trying to kill you, but it's also kind of being goofy. And stunting a little bit. At 40p, that's some really impressive motion blur. Yeah, for real. Um, if you've ever seen a video that consists of a grand total of three squares, you'll know what I'm talking about. But back in 1997, those three squares of the Sandman were all we needed. Sandalhead. <laughs> So you can go down to info to see what they do. Oh, okay. So if you want to know what a, sta a Fang staff does, this is a great place to learn. Uh, except it says this is an identified, so you don't know. Ah, uh, that's right. Hi, Mace says I remember in 04 downloading the French dub of Dragon Ball GT on dial-up. Holy shit, dude! That's a that's like a badge of honor. I remember in the 90s, Dragon Ball GT was like some weird television show from another alternate reality. We were never going to see it. Never going to get it. And then anime happened in like 2005. Oh shit, I forgot that I have to actually pay attention to how much I'm picking up. <laughs> Those dragon herbs are really sweet. So in the dungeons, there are also merchants, but you can try to kill the merchant if you don't want to pay. But the merchants usually have, like, high-quality guns. Kind of a mini-boss oh, situation. Oh, so I can't just do it again right now. No, no. This game sucks! <laughs> I want to open all my Christmas presents and eat all my food. <laughs> At the same time. Okay, this next section that you're trying to get to the town in is a bit of a grind. So just check your items and be super aware of them, because it's what's going to fuck you over. Uh, I forgot to put my uh, katana on, so I'm going to get attacked by this asshole, probably. You could cast a scroll first if you're worried about it. Yeah, he stole an arrow and disappeared. I don't give a shit about okay. that. Okay. Yeah. Oh, an arrow? You can have that. Yeah. I've got a basement full of them. Yeah, I'm a Fletcher, so what about it? I thought that was an NPC. Hmm. 
Mike, what were your early days on the internet like? What was 96 and 97 like for you? Uh, the Twinkies Project. <laughs> what? <laughs> it was a website where they, like, detailed scientific experiments that they did on Twinkies, like, subjecting them to a vacuum and, like... Oh, shit! Yes, I remember this! Yeah. Oh, my God, yeah. <laughs> oh, man, you've, like, unlocked a corner of my brain <laughs> I haven't seen in 30 years. <laughs> Uh, also, did you play a game called Faces? I think it was made by the Tetris guy. No, I don't think so. I believe it was made by... But it's, like, uh, different, like, like mouth, nose, and eyes of, like, different faces come down on the screen, and you gotta, like, match up the faces together. Ugh. Yeah. That sounds upsetting. That wasn't very good. <laughs> Better or worse than Hattress? I don't know. Damn. What are you going to spend the scroll on? I don't know. Fancy katana? Fancy staff? It's just a regular ass katana. That's what I fucking thought it was. God damn it. <laughs> okay. Oh, what I was going to do. I mean, it could be a significant upgrade in power. You wouldn't know until you equip it. Oh, okay. Why did that clown just appear below me? I don't know. I think it's oh, a zombie. Those, mushas. those are those fuckers. They oh, yeah. The, uh, level up an enemy that they touch. Mm hmm. Get the fuck back here. And they evolve, like, the enemies evolve like Pokemon if they get hit by them. It's actually like an upgraded enemy type. I got him. <laughs> no scope to That's the sweet. <laughs> The projectiles do feel really good to throw around in this game. Oh, those snake guys fucking suck, though. Uh, springs. <laughs> Nagamaki? Okay. Is that sushi? I don't remember. I mean, it's a sword, so... <laughs> oh, okay. A sushi sword? Yeah, I'm gonna equip it. Fuck okay. it. Does they give you more, uh... <laughs> yeah! <laughs> Hell yeah. Oh, but... <coughs> its strength is only five. As opposed to your katana, which is what, six or seven? Yeah. Seven. Well, the nice thing is that if you ever get a warehouse scroll or, or access to a warehouse, just throw that Nagamaki in there and you'll have a nice starting weapon. The warehouses, I believe, are linked from town to town to town. Oh, good. You picked up weed! <laughs> Whoa! I shouldn't have wasted all my arrows. Yeah, it's scroll time, baby. Or swing that bamboo staff. Nothing? I mean, not that I could see. <laughs> oh, shit. It said it was affected by the staff and took seven damage, so I think it's a poison staff. Oh, okay. Cool. It's not going to tell me how many uh, uh, charges I have until I identify it, or what? You got it. Cool. Well, I'm just. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna use it. I got enough HP to. You might as well just wait until you can throw it at somebody, if that's the case. Because hitting them with a thrown staff is like getting hit with one charge of the staff. Why are there so many of these fucking ghost mushes? They come to life after you kill enemies. Rutilus, weed and pots, this game rules. I agree, it's like I'm in freaking Humboldt County over here. When it gets late, I turn into Dennis Miller, and I apologize for that. Alright, I should get out of this floor. At least you kill the rice monsters in one shot now. Yeah. 
You are actually, like, your inventory is in really good shape. <laughs> yeah, I feel like it is, yeah. You've got multiple rice balls. You've got all extra weapons in case your weapons get destroyed. That's not cool. That's right, we got him. <laughs> borf, 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 borf. <laughs> Another Nagamaki. This weak shit off of my track. We've got a Katana plus one. John Cena. You can't hit me. That's, that's what he says, right? Yeah. <laughs> when he's driving. Uh... That'd be a hell of a wrestling gimmick, which is just like, yeah, I'm tough, but yeah, I don't like to be touched. Yeah, I'm uncomfortable in crowds. 50 experience points. Hot dog. That bamboo staff is doing the thing. I dealt 15 to that dude. <laughs> oh, he teleported somewhere else, and now we got a pot wrecker to deal with somewhere. Mm -hmm. A pot wrecker will have a random chance of destroying your pots when he hits you. I don't, I'm not holding any pots, the joke's on him. Ah, fuck you, buddy. We don't store our shit at all. Uh, yeah, I'd love to help you, but... I've got <laughs> nothing for you. The next time you come into town, you're like, Bro, your your granddaughter is constantly getting blinded. What's going on here? <laughs> Can we talk about parenting techniques? Right, come here. If you don't want to have the, um... <laughs> Your space taken up by the weeds, you can throw them at enemies to get their attention. <laughs> so much weed. You can also eat them, I think, for like 5% satiation. Something small like that. Okay. Rutula says, after a few turns, after Emusha dies, it will back up as a ghost. That is true. Yeah, that doesn't feel good. Oh my god! <laughs> you might need a global scroll. A what? Some, some sort of scroll to get out of this. I, I was thinking I get Dragon Herb, but... Dragon Herb would be probably better. Yeah, that's, that's smart. Fine, have an arrow. That thing you killed gave you 65. Yeah, I think I'm in, uh, rough shape. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, slow is like a pretty brutal status effect in a game where every step is a turn. Because it just means you lose turns. Die. Yeah, I did. Damn. That wasn't a bad run, though. I felt like that was okay. Not at all. I want to see where you are in the chart. I'd imagine you're pretty high. It looks... It keeps... I keep reading this as, like, nine and a half. But there's no nine, so it's just like a, an awkward counting system. Minion of Death whooped him good. Do you suppose that's a literal translation? 
would hope so. I would hope it's a translation for, like, kicked your ass or something. Yeah. It would be good if you lost a game and it was like, Game over. A skeleton kicked your ass. <laughs> So what do you think? It, yeah. Should we should we call the stream for the night? We're we're yeah, we're running that's, that's late. Probably, that's probably a good idea. I didn't even see what time it was. Oh yeah, it's <laughs> midnight. About, it is midnight. You are about to lose all sense of time, my friend, once you've discovered this game. Yeah, this is uh, this is bad news. I tell you what, I'm busting out the Vita. Oh my God! Please do, dude. You will love that game. Love it. And, and the portable DS version. Mwah. Mm-hmm. Well, thanks for swinging by, everybody. I I feel like we had a really crazy fun stream tonight with jumping from Rogue to this. We got to talk about mechanics, which we almost never do. Uh -huh. um, this is fun as fuck. Thanks for coming out, folks. Yep. See you next week. Cool. See you later, everybody.